رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله محمد وآله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد فوض بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن عدة الشهور عند الله سنا عشر شهرا في كتاب الله يوم خلق السماوات والأرض صدق الله العظيم Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen All praises are for Allah Azza wa Jalla Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has enabled us and given us the opportunity to witness this very holy and sacred season There are blessed times and there are holy times Holiness means sanctity It means sacred in the sight of Allah The masjid is a sacred place the haram is a sacred place. You can't commit sins in that place because Allah has made it holy. So when you hear something is a holy, something is holy, then your mind starts to think about, about the respect you have to show to it. If you see the Quran on the floor, you will become angry. You will tell your family, pick it up because it is a holy book. That's the word you use. It's holy. So this is a holy season. This is the season of Hajj and Qurbani. Very, very great season. This is why when the Prophet ﷺ spoke about these days that we are witnessing and we are going through. From the first day of Dhul Hijjah, which we have witnessed a few days ago, until the tenth of Dhul Hijjah, what did he say? In a very authentic tradition, coming from Jabir radiallahu ta'ala, he said, Abdalu ayyamid dunya. He says, the greatest and the most virtuous of all the days of the world in a year, it is these 10 days, subhanallah. This is what he said. And this is why in many traditions, coming from Abdullah bin Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhumah, and Jabir bin Abdullah radiallahu ta'ala and all these traditions they bear the same meaning the message and the understanding in which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said ma min ayyamin ahabbu ila allahi an yuta'abbada lahu fiha min ashri dhil hijjah there are no other days in the entire year which are most beloved to Allah to worship him on except these 10 days of Zulhijjah. This is what he said. And you may have heard about it before, in your last khutbah, the virtues of the 10 days of Zulhijjah. It is a season also where, when Ibrahim alayhi salam was ordered by Allah to give a command and announce to the people, Allah said to him in the Quran, وَأَذِّنْ فِي النَّاسِ بِالْحَجِّ O Ibrahim, Call out to the people and invite them to come and perform the Hajj. Ibrahim salam was alone. His wife Hajra and his small son Ismail salam who helped him build the Kaaba. Not a single soul in the land of Hijaz, in the valley of Makkah. Not a single person. So Allah ordered him to call out. This is the, the words in the Quran. وَأَذِّنْ فِي النَّاسِ you can say, make an adhan. Adhan is an announcement. Make an announcement linnas for mankind. But where is mankind? Allahu Akbar. Ibrahim alayhi salam said, Well, Allah, there isn't anybody here. Who will hear the announcement I'll make? He said, Oh, Ibrahim, your job is to make an announcement. My job is to reach it to the hearts of mankind. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar and Hafiz ibn Kathir has given the entire narration of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam where Ibrahim alayhi salam stood on a little hill and he said, Ayyuhan nas, O mankind, your Lord has taken a house for himself. Now come and visit the house. And Allah took his voice and reached it far into the hearts of mankind in whatever, Allah, in whatever way Allah knows. We cannot understand that. Angels inspire us every day and we don't know. The shayateen and the devils prompt us every day and we don't hear them. And the Quran testifies to the fact that all of us here 
and all of those who went before and those who are yet to come, Allah questioned us in the world of souls and he said, Alastu bi rabbikum, am I not your Lord? And the Quran tells us, and the Quran, it is the word of Allah, it tells us that mankind, you and I said, Bala, O oh Allah, indeed. But can, we can't remember that. But does it mean that if we can't remember, we'll deny it? Does it mean if we can't understand how that happened, we, wouldn't, we will deny it? We, we didn't know when we were born, but can we deny we were born? Did you see yourself when you were born? No. But can you deny that? No. You probably started to know yourself from about five or six years, growing up or even more than that. But before that, Everything about you people have recorded and they tell you what you used to do, what you not used to do, how you used to give your mommy and daddy trouble, how you used to cry for the entire night. Sometimes you may want to deny it, but how can you deny it when you don't know? But you can't deny it because it's real. So not knowing something doesn't give anybody the justification to deny it and reject it. Once Allah has spoken and the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has spoken, it ends right there for a believer. The believer doesn't question anything further than that. The how, the why, the if, the but, that does not come into the mind of a believer at all. And this is how we as Muslims, my beloved brothers and sisters, we have to train ourselves. Because Islam means total submission. Not half submission, not quarter submission, not 99% submission. Islam means total submission to Allah and total surrendering to Allah. One of the greatest fitna of our time is where we Muslims are being actually incited to question our own deen. We are questioning, is this correct? We are questioning, is that correct? So much twisting and turning in the words and the message of the Quran is being placed before us. And then we buy into these things. Because all the media around us and all the sources that bring information to us, they are totally un-Islamic and they are anti-Islam. Would anybody who does not like your religion tell you something good about your religion? That's the question. But here our Muslims believe these things and our Muslims become doubtful. Subhanallah, this is why the scholars have mentioned on the topic of aqidah and beliefs in their books on aqidah, they say whosoever mind, whosoever his mind wavers in his belief in Allah, faqad kafara, he has gone out of Islam. How can your mind ever waver whether there is Allah or not? Whether Allah is your creator or not? Anytime your mind and your, your heart begins to waver, Thinking, is Islam the truth or not? Is the Quran the truth or not? Is Allah your creator or not? Does he exist or not? You have gone already out. That doesn't become of a Muslim. So therefore, all these things, it is important for us as believers to understand. This is why when Allah introduces the Quran, Surah Fatiha is the opening. The book opens with praising and glorifying Allah. That is the greatest message to mankind in Surah Al-Fatiha. This is why it is called Ummul Kitab, the mother of the book. The mother of the book. The commentators of the Holy Quran says that the Surah Fatiha is so great, the reason it is called the mother of the Quran is because the entire message of the Quran is condensed in Surah Fatiha alone. In Surah Fatiha alone. The entire message of the Holy Quran. And then we begin to recite the Quran. Allah is introducing his book, his holy book, his scripture. He says, Alif la mim al kitab la rayba fi. He is putting down his, uh, the, the, the foundation. He says, all oh, those who are reading this book, you are beginning to read this book, but one thing you must put in your mind and your heart is, this is a book, la rayba fi. It's not a book that has doubt and clear your mind from all the doubts. And then begin to read it. Don't go and read it with a doubtful mind. He says, no, no, no. La raiba fi. There is no doubt in it. If, therefore, if you are reading and doubt comes about, that's from your mind, not the Quran. That's from your heart, not the Quran. 
Subhanallah, because the Quran is a book that does not have the slightest doubt in it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we're speaking about when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered Ibrahim alayhi salam wa'addin fil nasi bil hajj, announced to mankind. He did that. He announced the people and in response to that call that was made so many years, thousands of years ago, people until today are responding to that call every year. Allahu Akbar. That call came from Ibrahim alayhi salam. Allah reached that call to the hearts of man. And at a different point in time, they respond to that call. Subhanallah. Allah told Ibrahim alayhi salam, when you make that call, what will happen after you make that call? You will see people coming from every nook and corner of the globe. Allahu Akbar. Allah revealed this ayat and spoke to Ibrahim at a time when the world was hardly populated. When there was no one living in Makkah except three people. There wasn't even a city called Medina. These places, hardly people were living there, subhanallah. People never used to undertake uh, travels because it was, a, it, was a, it was a frightening thing to undertake. There were robbers, people who will rob you. They will take your caravan, they will take your horses, they will kill you. When you are killed in the middle of nowhere, who knows you have died? They just don't see you. You didn't return. Even among the Sahabas who used to undertake trips from Makkah to Syria, they used to trade with Syria. They will be looted on the way. Subhanallah. So therefore, this is the time where people respond to that call. So it is the time, it is the 10 days of Zul Hijjah, and in these days you have the Hajj and you have the Qurbani, Subhanallah. But my dear beloved brothers, and my dear sisters, a very interesting thing for us to, to note and for us to understand is that these two great acts of worship, Qurbani, so great that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that Ma Alim Amila ibn Adam Yawma Nahri Ahabba ilallahi min Iraqat dam. He says on the days of Qurbani. The servant of Allah has not done or will not do anything greater and more beloved to Allah than slaughtering and sacrificing the animals, subhanAllah. That is the most beloved action on the day of Qurbani. For you to slaughter an animal and give it to Allah and offer it to Allah. By saying, Allah, wa minka wa laka, oh Allah, this animal is from you and we are giving you back this animal, subhanAllah. No amount of money can compensate for that act of sacrifice you are doing. You may have purchased an animal for, probably a small animal for $2,000, or took a share in an animal for probably between $15,000 to $2,500. You look at that on one side and you say, I want to give $100,000 in charity, but not do Qurbani. Your $100,000 is in no way close to that $2,000 you would have spent for a small animal. Because Qurbani, as I mentioned before in other places, Qurbani is not about charity. Qurbani is not about help. Qurbani is not about donation. Qurbani is not about any one of these things that a man will think about giving meat here and there or giving it somewhere else to help the poor and the needy. Qurbani is not about helping the poor and the needy. Qurbani is about you giving a sacrifice in memory of Ibrahim alayhi salam, just as he gave his son, is you reliving that moment of Ibrahim alayhi salam. That is the spirit of Qurbani that we Muslims are losing today. We are always encouraged. Give your Qurbani here because the people are poor. Is the Qurbani about helping the poor? Subhanallah. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on one occasion alone sacrificed 100 animals. Allahu Akbar. 60 something of that he sacrificed with his own blessed hands and the rest he gave to Ali radiallahu ta'ala. Couldn't he send some here and there in different cities and carry them? No. Qurbani is about you giving Allah something like how Cain and Abel give to Allah. Allah gave us the history of Qurbani. Allah told us in the Quran. 
He said to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, "What lo alaihim naba abanay Adam bil haqif qarba qurbanan and rehearse to them a messenger of Allah." The incident of the two sons of Adam, Cain and Abel, when both of them gave a qurbani to Allah, qarba qurbanan. The word qurban is used in the Quran because qurban is also an Arabic word. It means to do something to reach closer to Allah, because it comes from the word qaruba. Qarib means close. To become closer, Allah accepted the one whose kurbani was with sincerity and ikhlas, and Allah rejected the other one because it had no ikhlas and sincerity in it. Subhanallah, this is the history. Kurbani is as old as mankind on the face of the earth. In every nation, Allah always ordered the people give to Allah something that you own. People who are farmers will give their crops, part of their crop, a pumpkin or anything. People who had animals, they will give their animals. But people from the time of Adam alayhi salam until Ibrahim alayhi salam, when it became an official ritual, they always gave an offering to Allah. Not that Allah is in need of anything. We are in need, but Allah wants to see the level of the commitment and dedication to Him. So we must understand that, my dear beloved brothers and sisters. If you want to give charity, give charity every day in your life. Cook and feed people every day in your life. But Qurbani is a connection between you and your animal because on the day of judgment, your animal will stand close to you. The Prophet ﷺ says, Oh Fatima, sacrifice your animal. If you cannot do that, let somebody sacrifice it. And when it means sacrifice, stand close to it. This animal will stand Next to you, it will be your sacrifice. It will identify itself with you in front of Allah. It's much, it has a deeper meaning. So sometimes people say, we have too much meat. So and so is already taking a share. So what? Let so and so take a share. So you want to deprive yourself from the blessings of this. It's not about me. You may not eat anything. But yes, you have done qurbani, you get all the blessings and that animal will be your animal on the day of judgment. So therefore, the, what I was saying is that both these great rituals which Allah has placed in our deen, they are connected to one person. Hajj is such a big thing, Allahu Akbar. For those who have been to Hajj, just look at the amount of people who perform Hajj, Allahu Akbar. Look at that. The greatest acts and rituals making tawaf of the Kaaba, Allahu Akbar, the house of Allah, the first house of Allah on the face of the earth, straight directly above it is Baytul Ma'mur, the Kaaba in Jannah, Allahu Akbar. The angels make tawaf around that, Allahu Akbar. You go to Mina, where Mina, where Ibrahim alayhi salam took his son and placed him on a stone. And started to rub the knife on his throat. This is the place you go to. You go to Arafah where Allah joined back Hawa and Adam after they cry and wept and cry and wept. They were placed from Jannah on the face of the earth. When Adam salam disobeyed Allah but Allah forgave him. But when they were placed on the face of the earth they were not placed together. <laughs> Adam was already married. He was placed in one corner of the earth and Hawa was placed. And husband and wife will be crying. So he was crying because of the separation, but more so crying for Allah to forgive him. And they wept and they wept and they wept, searching for each other, searching for each other, searching for each other, until eventually, as we say, they bounce up each other on the plain of Arafah. This is why it's called Arafah. Arafah comes from the Arabic word, Arifa Ya'rafu means to recognize. They recognize each other. After the last time they met each other was in Jannah. Now it's the first time they are meeting on the earth. Subhanallah. They met each other in Arafah. They worshipped Allah. Thanked Allah. Praised Allah. That after having been separated for so many years. Now Allah united them. And then they slept together. But where did they sleep together? At Muzdalifa. Muzdalifa is where human being was born. Allahu Akbar. The first 
Union between Adam and Hawa was there in Muzdalifah. So Hajj is after Arafah, they go to Muzdalifah to spend the night because our father and mother went to Muzdalifah. Allah. Sacred place. Allah has kept our symbol so much alive that since the time of Adam alayhi salam, Muzdalifah has not been destroyed. Same mountain. The same mountain that witnessed the Anbiyas still witness you and I when we go there. Allah. They lie down and sleep. We also lie down and sleep. The Allah. The same Arafah that recognized them will recognize you and I also. These places we normally hear, we don't know the history, but they have a deep history. This is why our deen is so perfect. It just doesn't tell us to do this and do that. There is a meaning. And all these things then, at the time of Ibrahim alayhi salam, Allah revived that because we know after Adam alayhi salam, Sheath alayhi salam, and these prophets came, then at the time of Noah alayhi salam, when the people disobeyed Allah, Allah sent the huge flood and deluge that took the whole world at one time and destroyed everything. And the walls of the Kaaba also were destroyed, but the hump having the stone of the Kaaba remained there, subhanallah. And that is what Ibrahim alayhi salam started to build back on. Jibreel alayhi salam was leading him from Philistine Street to Hijaz. So Hajj is connected to him that we do. He went to these places and the Qurbani he did is connected to him that we do also. But it's strange that so many prophets came in the past. Jesus, Isa alayhi salam, is one of the greatest Rasul of Allah. Just imagine that. His birth was miraculous. He spoke from the cradle. He used to revive the dead with Allah's power. The blind people who will pass his hand, they will gain sight. All different types of miracles, the Quran is filled with that mention about Isa alayhi salam. Subhanallah. Great prophet. He is the only prophet and rasul that is given the title Kalimatullah, the word of Allah. Kalimatullah, the word of Allah. Allahu Akbar. Jeep. Musa alayhi salam, the greatest nabi of the Banu Israel. <laughs> Musa alayhi salam, the only nabi on the face of the earth to have caught a glimpse of Allah or the nur of Allah when he fell unconscious on the Mount of Sinai. This is why the Prophet ﷺ says, when Allah's arush with Allah will come down, everybody will immediately fall unconscious on the day of judgment. He says, I will be the first one to regain consciousness. And when I open my eyes, I will see Musa salam clinging on to one of the footstool of the arush of Allah. The Rasul says in the hadith recorded by my Muslim, I do not know if he fell unconscious but regained consciousness before me. Or his unconsciousness was what occurred in Mount Sinai while he was there. So there is no reason for him to fall unconscious again. The only Nabi. But when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked us to follow certain traditions, he did not ask us to follow any other Nabi except the Nabi, the Khalil of Allah, Ibrahim alayhi salam. By passing all these other Anbiyas, going straight up to the beginning, and telling us, Ibrahim is the one you follow. Allahu Akbar. Why? My dear beloved brothers, my dear sisters, the way Allah has praised and commended Ibrahim in the Quran, no other Nabi has gotten such a praise. This is why. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He mentions so many great things about Ibrahim alayhi salam. Besides the fact that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was from the direct progeny of Ibrahim Alayhi Salam, Ibrahim Alayhi Salam himself was one of the mightiest messenger, the only Nabi from among all the Anbiya's 124,000 more or less that Allah officially said in the Quran to him, I have taken you as my friend, Allah. This is what Allah said to Ibrahim. I have taken you as my friend. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and there are only two people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that we believers must follow and take as our, as our example and role models. One is who? 
our messenger the prophet muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when allah says laqad kana lakum fi rasulillahi uswatun hasana certainly in the messenger of allah you o muslims you have the most perfect example example and that's your role model but not only him allah says about ibrahim qad kanat lakum uswatun hasanatun fi ibrahim o believers in Ibrahim, you have the most perfect example also, Allah Akbar. The most perfect example. When the Sahabas, radiallahu ta'ala anhum, they ask about the Qurbani, what is this? Ma hadihi al-adahi. O Prophet of Allah, what is this Qurbani about that we do every year? He said, Sunnata abikum Ibrahim. This is the sunnah of your father, Ibrahim, alayhi salam. Allah mentioned in the Quran that he has not placed any difficulty upon us. Whose religion is this that we follow? This Islam that we follow? Whose religion? Yani it's Allah's religion, but from whom it came? Originally, Allah Himself says in the Quran, Millata Abikum Ibrahim, this is the religion of your father, Ibrahim alayhi salam. Subhanallah. This is the religion of your father, Ibrahim alayhi salam. Then Allah says, Who was Samaqumul Muslimin? He named you Muslims min qabl wa fi hadha from aforetime, from before and even at this time. Subhanallah. So therefore, when we look at the meaning of the, this ayah, Allah is telling us that this religion and who he revealed this ayah to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and to his entire following, all of us. And what is Allah telling us? That this religion and Islam we follow, circumcision we do is for directly from Ibrahim alayhi salam. Miswak we do is from Ibrahim alayhi salam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam counted 10 things directly from Ibrahim alayhi salam that we all practice. 10 things that we all practice in our daily lives as Muslims because it is part of our deen. That is how Allah gave acceptance to Ibrahim alayhi salam. And Allah is saying that what you are doing, it is the mill, the religion of your father Ibrahim alayhi salam. And then the ayah goes on to say, Huwa samakumul muslimin. And he named you Muslims uh, from before and at this time. So you have two commentary on this part of the ayah. Some of the commentators of the Holy Quran, they have stated that the word Huwa samakumul muslimin means that Allah named you Muslims. Allah named you Muslims from before. Yani in all the revealed scriptures, Allah called you, O followers of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah called you Muslims. Wa fi hadha, and in this Quran, Allah has also called you Muslims. And scholars have stated, many commentators have stated that huwa samakumul, he named you Muslims, refers to who? Ibrahim alayhi salam named you Muslims. And they refer to the ayah in the Quran. When Ibrahim alayhi salam and his son made dua to Allah after they built the Kaaba, what was the dua of Ibrahim alayhi salam? Who was the first person who used the word Muslim? Ibrahim alayhi salam. What did he say in the Quran? It's mentioned, Rabbana, O oh Allah, waja'alna muslimaini laka, O oh Allah, make us, me and my son, Muslims for you. Allahu Akbar. First person. Make us Muslims. And then he said, وَمِن ذُرِّيَّتِنَا And from our progeny, make who? Ummatan Muslimatan lak. And make a Muslim Ummah. Allahu Akbar. This was who's the word? Ibrahim alayhi salam. So this is why Ibrahim alayhi salam, from a foretime, from at his time, he already started to use the word Muslim for those who are obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He begged Allah to make him and his son Muslims and beg Allah to raise a nation who will be a Muslim ummah. This is a Muslim ummah, Allahu Akbar. This is why the commentator says that huwa sammakum min Ibrahim alayhi salam call you Muslim. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he mentioned the outstanding attributes of Ibrahim alayhi salam, and Allah has told us also that you will find the most perfect example in the conduct, in the behavior, in the way of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Allah introduces Ibrahim alayhi salam to all of us. And he says, Inna Ibrahim, certainly Ibrahim, kana ummatan qanitan lillah. Ibrahim alayhi salam, 
Allah says, Ummat and he was, Ummah means what? A nation. And Allah is calling Ibra Ibrahim salam was so great, Allah says he was as if he was a whole nation by himself. The word Ummah means Jami'un li kulli khairin. It means that person who has all the different good in him. He had every type of good deed in him. Subhanallah. And every examination and test Allah sent to him, every trial Allah sent to him, he passed all, one after the other. As in that other ayah, وَإِذِ بَتَلَى إِبْرَاهِيمَ رَبُّهُ بِكَلِمَاتٍ فَأَتَمَّهُنَّ Remember when Allah tested Ibrahim a.s. with many things and he passed all. Abdullah bin Abbas says, there were about 30 different trials and things that came over Ibrahim a.s. We probably know one and two here and there. And immediately, every single one Ibrahim a.s. passed. When Ibrahim a.s. was successful, in all these different trials and examinations, what did Allah say? Inni ja'iluka lil nasi imama, O Ibrahim, you are so great. I will make you a leader, Allah for mankind. Allahu Akbar. Having the title to become a leader. And so, Ibrahim is the father of all the Ambiyas who came after him. All the Ambiyas who came after him, Ibrahim is their father. Is the founder of the three major monotheistic religions on the face of the earth, which came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that he was such a person, he was ummatan. Then Allah says, qanitan lillah. He was devoutly obedient to Allah. In every single thing, he was always obedient to Allah. Never disobeyed Allah in anything, subhanallah. As a young boy growing up, he could not tolerate shirk. His father kicked him out of the house. His father kicked him out. He says, if you say anything against our gods, I will pelt you. I will stone you. And then Ibrahim as a young man was thrown into the fire of Nimrad. Ibrahim had no complaint. Look how obedient Ibrahim was. He is in the fire. Going into the fire. A few seconds away from falling into such a huge fire that was kindled and lit by Namrud, Nimrod. Nimrod. It, the fire, the flames were going so high that the birds flying very high were being burnt and they were dropping. And they could not even go close. They made a catapult or a slingshot and flung him into it from a far distance. The angels are confused in Jannah. Looking on to see what is happening. The angels, they want to see what Allah will do. Subhanallah. They begin to beg Allah. It's about, he's about to be thrown into this huge fire. This is Allah's servant. This is Allah's Khalil. Why is Allah not sending them to help Ibrahim? Why is Allah not doing anything? They are confused, perplexed. They say, oh Allah, this is your friend Ibrahim. Allah says, yes, he's my friend Ibrahim. He says, please Allah. Let us go and do something. Let us go and save him. Let us go and take him out and stop the fire. Allah says, I am not ordering you to go, but if you are seeking my permission to go, so be it. You have my permission, you can go. But that's not my order, meaning I am not sending you to save Ibrahim a.s. But if you on your own. So they went. They surrounded Ibrahim a.s. Ibrahim a.s. The hadith says, Ibrahim a.s. Saw them. He says, how is your coming here? He says, we have come here to help you. Ibrahim alayhi salam says, did Allah send you? They said, no. He says, well, I have no need for your help. Allah is sufficient for me. Hasbun Allah wa ni'mal wakil. Allah is sufficient for me. He is the best disposer of all. Allah knows I am here. Allah will take care of me. He says, you can go back. I have no need for you. So Allah didn't stop the fire. <laughs> Allah didn't do anything with the catapult or the single shot that didn't fling him anymore. He allowed them to throw him and he allowed the fire to keep on blazing and burning and allowed Ibrahim salam to go. But at that moment, Allah says, Ya naru kuni bardam wa salaman ala Ibrahim. O fire, become cool and peaceful for my friend Ibrahim. You are not to burn Ibrahim today. Your nature is burning, but today you will be like a garden. 
You will be peaceful and cool. Ibrahim alayhi salam stayed for a long period. Everybody thought that he was burnt to ashes. He walked out of the fire after some time. They were hairan and confused. What is Ibrahim doing? Look, he's walking out alive. Ibrahim himself said the best part of his life was in the fire. Allah. Ibrahim alayhi salam was qanitan lillah, devoutly obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the great khalil of Allah that Allah has placed his practices amongst us to do. So when we do these things, it is also connected to Ibrahim alayhi salam. We'll stop there inshallah, we'll continue to speak more about this great Nabi of Allah, the khalil of Allah, Ibrahim alayhi salam. Next, next week, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us, keep us, keep us on guidance and May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to always do that which is good. Wal akhir da'wan alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.